My name is Mac McQuaid. I live in western Montana. And uh, we heat our home and our in my shop with wood. So, as everyone knows that has a wood burner, uh, you've got to get your wood in, you've got to get it split. Well, years ago I built a splitter that uh, ran off of a PTO on a small tractor, hydraulic splitter, and it worked well, and it still works well. But it's kind of slow, and it's cumbersome to move around. So I watched a bunch of YouTube videos about uh, I'm calling it a Pittman arm splitter. And I thought, you know, that looks like it ought to be a good rig to build. And I happened to have a, a 30 to 1 gear reduction gearbox. So anyway, I went about building this unit. Now most of the videos that you find on YouTube on these type of splitters show them splitting wood and, and uh, different views of how, how they split the wood, but nobody really talks about um, how they built it and what the gear ratios are and how many horsepower and all that stuff. So I thought I'd just uh, do this little video and explain some of that stuff. Um, my goal in, in designing this splitter First of all, to make it safe, I wanted to cycle slowly. Some of the ones you see on YouTube are cycling in three seconds or four seconds or five seconds. I wanted a six second at least um, in between strokes. That seems pretty slow, but compared to a hydraulic splitter, uh, you can split a lot more wood in an hour uh, with that. Um, one of the videos I saw had many of them have the ram coming right up to the wedge. Uh, to me that's very dangerous. One of them I saw was spaced back three or four inches and that's how I built mine. If you happen to get your hand in, in between the wedge and the, and the, the ram, uh, you're not going to get hurt, or it's less likely anyway. I wanted this unit to be portable, easy to move around. I've got a little golf cart, live on 10 acres, and I have a little golf cart and I rigged up a, a trailer hitch kind of thing on it so I can hook up this, this splitter and, and move it around the, the property. <clears throat> okay, now you have to have a gear reduction. And my total reduction for this unit, yours might be different, but for mine is 250 to 1. In other words, for every RPM of the output shaft that has the pitman arm at, welded to it, the engine turns over 250 times. So 250 to one is the ratio that I'm using. I wanted uh, this splitter to be a little different than others that I saw. I wanted it to be modular, where you could take it apart and work on part of it if you have to. So, or you can take it off and work on it. In order to get a, get a good enough gear reduction, I had to have a, a jack shaft. So the motor runs a pulley on the jack shaft, then a sprocket on the jack shaft, drives another sprocket that's on the, on the gear box, and then the gear box has the pitman arm that operates the, the push rod. Um, On that jack shaft, I thought, you know, rather than just put a big pulley on there, I want to have a flywheel of sorts. So <clears throat> I found a uh, brake rotor, I think it was off of a, a pickup truck maybe, I'm not sure what it was off of, I got it out of the junkyard. And I modified it to fit on that jack shaft and that's my, that's my uh, flywheel and the large pulley 
that the motor drives. So there's a reduction there. The, the motor pulley is a three inch and this uh, brake rotor is 12 inch. So there's a, a reduction there. <clears throat> Every mechanical device should have a way to compensate for an overload. For instance, on a hay baler, they have what's called a shear pin. So if you get too much of a load, too heavy of a load, rather than break something major, it'll break that shear pin. Well, I, I don't have a shear pin, but on the belt drive that comes from the motor to the flywheel, I've got a, uh, a pulley, an idler pulley or a tension pulley that drives up uh, and tightens the belt. If I get into a situation where, and you'll see that on the video, where I stall the machine, it just won't handle the log that I've got in there. Rather than tear something up, uh, I can kick that clutch out or that idler pulley and the, the whole thing will go into neutral so it won't put extra strain on some other part. Um, that's located near the operator, so it's very easy to, to hit. That's another design feature that I put into this. I wanted all the mechanical stuff, the pulleys and the chain and, and the chain or belt tensioner, all that, I wanted it away from the operator. So there's no chance of getting your shirt sleeve caught in it or some other problem. Like I say, I built in a little uh, tow hitch on it to where I can hook it up to my golf cart and pull it around the property. I guess that's kind of the, the gist of what I wanted to tell everybody. Um, I've got a spreadsheet that I did for the for gear ratios. If anybody's interested, I'd be happy to send that to you. It's, it's, it's not rocket science, but at least it's uh, uh, a little easier if you don't have to design one on your own. Um, all in all, I'm very pleased with this. Uh, splitting wood is not a chore now. We had a stack of, of rounds cut and it had been sitting there for a few months and kind of dreading getting it all split up and stacked and all that. Well, in about an hour and a half of having fun, not work, that's all split up. And now I've run out of rounds and I'm kind of looking around saying, hmm, wish I had some more stuff to split. Because it's, uh, it's enjoyable, it's not work anymore. Kindling is always a problem, you know. How do you get enough kindling set aside so you have an easy way to start your fire? Well, these splitters will not only cut, you know, split logs or log pieces, uh, it's, it's great for making kindling and it's easy and it's safe and uh, <laughs> you can spend a half hour piddling around splitting kindling on this and uh, you'll have a wheelbarrow full in just a little bit. And so far I can't say enough good about that engine from Harbor Freight. It's six and a half horsepower. What I read on the internet is it's a uh, Honda clone. I don't know if that's true or not, but it is a very nice engine, runs smooth, starts easy, has adequate power, and for $129, I think, uh, is the current price. If you get one with a 20% discount, you're right at 100 bucks. Uh, that's hard to beat. I started out with a two horsepower electric motor because I thought that would be ample. ample. It was absolutely, um, absolutely worthless. It just flat did not have enough power. And I would have had to go on to a three or four or five horsepower electric 
And uh, I guarantee you that would cost more than a hundred bucks for that little gas engine. Um, I'm very pleased with it. It runs good. It just sips gasoline. I mean, it, I, I'm amazed at how little gasoline it uses. Only takes a half a quart of oil to change the oil, so there's no excuse to run dirty oil in it. Um, gosh, I guess that's about all I can think of to tell you now. So let's look at some videos and see what you think of it. You know, every piece of machinery has a breaking point. And I tried to build into this um, a shear pin, so to speak, of if something is too tough, it's going to slip rather than break something. Well, that safety um, overload situation that I built is here with this idler right on the other side it's an idler belt that goes on the pulley. So if you get into something too tough, hit that release, it kicks the idler out of, uh, out of the pulley and makes the belt loose so it'll slip. To reset that, it's pretty easy. Just pull that back around and put it in there. You notice my fancy spring here, just a rubber band I'll get that fixed later. So we're going to try this on a, on a log that's pretty tough. Uh, this is kind of semi-green. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of wood it is, some kind of pine. But we'll give it a go and see how it does. If it overloads, I'll hit that release and I'll show you how that works. This is a Harbor Freight 6.5 horsepower motor. Very, very nice motor. Does a good job. got the log kind of jammed into the to the wedge so I got to back it up so I'm going to spin the flywheel backwards a little bit just enough to loosen the, the ram now we can pull that off Like I said, most of the YouTube videos just shows them splitting wood. It doesn't show any about anything about the construction. So uh, I, I watched all the videos and I decided I would make a few changes, not necessarily improvements, but things I thought would be a little better. First off, the splitting head is removable. So you can have different different heads there's another one that I built at a little different configuration it just fits in that socket like so second thing I made this delivery table so it's removable so you just pull this pin slide the table off. Now you've got everything out in the open where you can work on it. I wanted to design this to where I can make some changes if I wanted to and um, not be a major deal to make a change. Most of the videos you see this uh, push assembly is is on there. It's all welded on or it's bolted on different ways, but mostly welded where you can't get it off. 
Well, I decided I wanted to have this one to where I could remove that if I wanted to. So I've just got a drilled and tapped hole in the end here with a couple of washers. So you can pull this pin like that. By the way, that's a three quarter inch pin. Now, all you have to do is slide your push head off. Let's just see how that's made a little bit. So you could uh, repair it, work on it if you wanted to. I see one of my bushings came loose. I'll have to re-weld that. So anyway, you just uh, put that back on there, like so. Up here at this end, you can take this bolt out, same thing. This push rod assembly will come off. So if you ever want to make it longer or shorter or for some reason change something on it, it's, um, it's removable and you can work on it. Okay, the wheels that you see on here, I got off of one of those baby strollers. They're marginal at best. Um, I'm going to replace those with something heavier duty. I haven't figured out exactly what yet. This gearbox is a 30 to 1 reduction. Like I said, the motor is off of a uh, Harbor Freight. Very good so far. I've only had it a while. This big gear that you see that the Pitman arm is attached to I, I just simply couldn't get it off the shaft. It was too tough, so I just milled off the top half of it. And I welded uh, my Pitman arm on there. Now, I broke this several times with, uh, without this reinforcement, so I finally reinforced it like it is, not having any problem with any breakage. Now the engine, you can see that clutch assembly right here. Let me see if I can trip that while, while we're looking at it. You can see how it works. That's how that clutch kicks out when you trip it from the other side. Anyway, drives from this pulley on the engine to this flywheel, which is a, a brake rotor off of some kind of a vehicle, I'm thinking maybe a pickup or something, that I modified and, and uh, made a flywheel and a pulley out of it. It's mounted on this jack shaft that you see right here, three quarter inch shaft. That's driving a, a chain uh, sprocket down here, that's a number 12 tooth. It's going up to this one, which is a 25 tooth. Those would be different on something that you made possibly, but that's just what worked out well for here. Um, this, uh, this pin here on the push rod is one inch, seems to be adequate so far. I've split maybe a, a cord of wood with it, and so far it just worked uh, better than I expected actually. So that's kind of the overall view of it.
Fire! 